Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel, Wisteria here. Before we continue, I want you to know this is complete fiction. It's fictional, it's not real. But Janet Preston, an ordinary woman who seems to have got entangled in the Yorkshire witch trials. Hmm, that are Pendle Hill, actually. So, as we go into this tale, I want you to know again, it's fictional. Let's put ourselves back in the day, for example, and decide to try and see what it might feel like, what it might be like to be one of the accused. Because it's the 17th century Yorkshire, the dialect is different sometimes. So, alus means always. Hirsen, hisen, misen. Herself, himself, myself. Maybe, maybe. Nithering, cold. Nout, nothing. Reet, right. Summit, something. Okay. Hi, Grim, come thee here. Great beast, dispel my fear. Send the witches down to hell. Help me now and toll the bell. An old charm, that is. April, 1612. I stumbled forward in a familiar, gloomy stench at a push. The heavy, iron-bound oak door slammed behind me. I heard the mechanism of the lock as York Castle Gola secured his dungeon. I stood where I was, frozen in disbelief. How could I be back here, me weeks, after Sir Edward Bromley and his jury freed me? I shivered and pulled my cloak around me as I peered into the gloom, trying to pick out the deeper shadows of figures. It were nithering in here, as it had been before. But how many others would I be sharing this place with this time? Who were they? What had they done to be kept in here months ahead of the next assizes? It had to be summit, summit serious. Otherwise, they'd have had bail. The gowler were fond of coin. Are you just going to stand there? I recognise the voice. John Wilson? That cannot be. You still here? I lass. Here I still be. His words were broken off by deep coughing. I took a tentative step forward, then shuddered at a splash. An old icy chill seeping into my stockings and the stink of stagnant water and shite slapped me and I gasped, slapping my hand over my mouth and nose. Wilson chuckled, a strange sound in these environs. I, still flooded, reckon you miss worst of it though. The gloom seemed to lift as my eyes grew used to it, and I moved by instinct. John's voice came from the same corner he'd occupied in April. I took small steps forward, skirts raised out of the mere, resigned to the smell and the scurrying of fleeing rodents. Then I remembered my last incarceration here and let my skirts fall. There were no point in drying them to keep them dry. There were no point in even trying at all. The pool of water were not as large as I remembered, and I rose out of it as I moved further away from the wall, bounded by the river force. I sat, doing my best not to think about what I was sitting in. From memory, no part of this stone floor would be anything approaching clean. I'd understood you to be freed, John, as I were. I, not guilty of coining, the main evidence in my favour, being that I have no coin. Not usually a good thing, I remarked, as I shuffled closer to share some warmth. Old habits never left, as it seemed. And not so now. John gave that strange high-pitched chuckle once more. I have no coin to pay my fees, no family to settle my debt for me. So, they keep you here, John? Aye, not guilty I may be, 
but I'll not see freedom until I find some coin. How much do you owe? William had settled my own debt to the gaoler and had not told me the amount. Just how much had my husband paid my tormentors? Nine shillings, Wilson said. But that's a full month's wages. Aye, and I'll die in here for it. He chuckled once more. Turned him mad, it has, forever laughing, a woman said. Better than the screaming and raging he put us all through at first, another said. True enough. Once the gala started, adding shilling fines to his debt, every time he cursed him, or the judge, castle or court, he found a comfort in mirth. There's some sense in that, I allowed, trying to imagine the joy for relief, on release being slaughtered by the horror of continued incarceration in this place, with no end in sight. Happen I choose madness too, in those circumstances. And Magiphone, the woman said, Lizinism. The second, Janet Preston, I completed the trilogy of introductions. Here we have Maggie Thorne, Lizzie Nixon and Janet Preston. Ah, the witch, Maggie said. We've been hearing about you, aye, and them others and all. I bristled. I ain't no witch. I were tried for it once before. The good juryman declared me innocent. Then why are you again, if you ain't no witch? If I were a witch, do you not think... I'd have flown somewhere far away from this place. She makes a good point there, Lizzie said. But them other witches, them she kens over Pendle Way. Word is they were planning to blow Lancaster Castle, just like gunpowder treason. Aye, that's right, a man's voice joined in the discussion. I heard about that. I reckon they were planning to blow up York Castle and all. Is that why you're here? and not off with the devil. I could barely see him, but recognised the movements of his right arm. He'd crossed Hisson, a priest then, another Catholic in this hell hole. Oh, I couldn't decide if that were a good thing or nay. Then the full import of his words hit me, and I took a breath, terrified by what they were saying, then coughed and retched out a foul stench of fetid water and human waste. Nonsense, I croaked when I could speak once more. Thomas Lister, he's why I'm here. There's no plots nor witches, just a man lost in grief and hatred. But Lister's a fine gentleman. Why would he bother himself with the likes of you? The priest asked. I knew his father. He thinks I knew him too well. Ah, the woman said in understanding. And did you? My breath hit, should I remembered, just in time to avoid drawing in a great chestful of air. You were my master, not more. You're the one that murdered him, Lizzie exclaimed. They say he bled when you touched his corpse. Nout but malicious gossip, I waved, the absurd accusation away. Aye, damnable gossip. Put us all in here it has, eh, Lizzie? Maggie elbowed her friend. I had nout to do with his father's death, nor that of his mam, neither, I protested. Aye, we know just like we had naught to do with the counterfeit coins at Thursday Market, and Father Greaves here ain't no priest. That's right, Lizzie, he ain't no priest. And them bad guineas, naught to do with us neither, Maggie giggled. All of us are as innocent as mad Johnnier. But, I stopped short, fear, anger and despair taking the words from my tongue. I've done naught, I whispered to another chuckle and cough from John Wilson. No bugger else heard me. And that is chapter one of Janet as she enters York Gal for a second time. I hope you enjoy. Thank you for listening and many blessings. <laughs>